Hi there. I'm uh, starting to write a book, or I've been in the process of writing a book on uh, great questions in history. And uh, there are many, there are many of these, but I've decided to reduce it to about ten or twelve questions. And one of them that I've been looking at in, in depth lately is is the question: Was Napoleon, Napoleon Bonaparte, was he actually a megalomaniac? In other words, was he solely driven for a love, with a love for power? Was that what Napoleon was all about? I had an argument, or more a little debate, with, with somebody online on this issue. And um, it seems as though there are two schools of thought. A substantial amount of English historians, British historians particularly, believe that he, he was very much a megalomaniac. French historians, for the most part, take a different view on Napoleon and see him more as a, as a complicated figure, somewhat of, of an ideologue, but, um, but of someone who transcends that uh, megalomaniac label. So the question is, what, what exactly was Napoleon? I personally believe that I think it's I think it's too simple a solution to label Napoleon as a megalomaniac. He certainly had a love for power. There's no doubt about that. And with each of his, of his successes, he seemed to become more and more imbued with power. I, I can see where that label comes from. The fact that he was made uh, first consul, then first consul for life. And then finally, him crowning himself as, as emperor, certainly speak of, of the actions of a megalomaniac. But uh, is this the full question is, uh, surrounding Napoleon? What actually drove him? Well, to look at this, you have to, you have to look at the origins of Napoleon. Where did he emerge from? He was the son of, <clears throat> of a Corsican family with um, petty aristocrats of Italian origin. In fact, uh, his family, to some extent, had been involved with uh, an early form of Corsican nationalism. But after going through uh, several military colleges in France, he seemed to have uh, incorporated and um, took on the persona of, of a French type of nationalism. And this was certainly uh, stressed during, his, uh, during the French Revolution, when uh, it became clear that he was very much a champion of the republican order of things. He, he very much supported the republican nature over, over a constitutional monarchy. And uh, this was seen in, his, uh, in, in the, the fight at the Siege of Toulon, where he actually made a name for himself uh, against the forces of the first coalition who were trying to defeat the uh, New Republic and were also seen in the Whiff of Grapeshot incident when he played a vital role in stopping the Royalist uprising in Brumaire, the month of Brumaire in, in France. So um, he, it's very early from those days to see that he had um, tied his flag, so to speak, to the Republican banner. And then that's what I think it was what actually drove Napoleon. I think he realized that something had emerged from the French Revolution, that there was something that was worth saving, that there was something that was actually worth expanding, and he wanted to expand this liberté, equality, fraternité, this French notion that had come out of the French Revolution. He wanted to make sure that it didn't lose ground in France itself and that it spread to the rest of, the, of Europe. So, in a sense, I think he was imbued that France was the nation of destiny. And he uh, remarks on this a few times, that he was intent on solidifying French power. And what, what worried Napoleon, in particular, were two great threats which he felt could, could weaken French power. The, the first of these great threats were the um, absolute monarchies of Europe, the Austrians, the Prussians, the Russians, 
and uh, they were leading the coalition against the French, and he felt that they had to be dealt with. And the, and the other great threat to France was the English version of democracy, or and the English version of sea power, military power, which he felt could uh, could could threaten France. So his idea was to um, win wars or win battles for France to make sure that the French position on the continent of Europe was as solidified as possible. I think as, as he gained his successes, he, he, was, he was very successful in the, in the victory in the first coalition and then in the Italian campaigns and Egyptian campaigns that um, heralded the second coalition. He, he extended this even further. Did, did extremely well in the, against the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth uh, coalitions, victories at Ulm, Marengo, Austerlitz, Gina and Ostad, Friedland, Wagram, etc. And uh, he concluded a number of treaties that were very positive in France's favor. And he certainly um, did what Louis XIV failed to do by greatly expanding the footprint of France. And so... It's, it seems to me that the success may have spurred him on, but the actual driver, w what he wanted to do, and you can see this in his domestic policies with his, his code Napoleon, um, was his, his desire to extend the French version of how a state should be run. And it was also a state, though, um, which wasn't actually uh, democratic. It was a state with a new order, and it was an absolute state. And he wanted to see this uh, dominate over Europe because he felt that this state would be more efficient and more practical and more forward-looking than the older ancient despots who were controlling the other European powers. So I think in many ways he was, the French are correct, he, he was an ideologue and that is what actually drove him. But there is a sense as well that, uh, that and, and there's some truth to this, that he also was a bit of a megalomaniac, largely spurred on by his successes. So which school of thought is correct? I would say both of them have got very, very good arguments. I don't think you can actually simplify the whole Napoleon issue to something as he's one or the other. I think, I think he combines both these, these facets. And uh, in some ways this was his success. He believed in himself. He certainly modified, uh, modernized warfare, particularly with his use of artillery. And I think that was, was a very important uh, uh, stance that he took. But he also believed that uh, Europe needed to be reshaped into a modern version that incorporated the gains of the French Revolution and that he himself was the man to do it. So he was a bit of a megalomaniac, that is correct, but he was driven by ideology, and that was to cement what had been established in the French Revolution. Thank you very much for listening.